Look at you. You're a mess. <laughs> Are you needing more insulation? Huh? Well, what's up, guys? It's Daniel in Houston from Arms Family Homestead. And uh, <clears throat> today, we're embarking on a new journey. We have a huge... Uh, um, new addition to the family, I guess you would say. Yeah. Houston has been uh, begging for a long time yes. for this, so <sighs> I don't even know where to start. <laughs> so if you go back several months, you guys, so many of you remember we lost our beloved chocolate chocolate lab, Bella, this, this past year. I almost said this year, but it's 2024 now. And Bella was our uh, everything dog. It went everywhere with us. She was our hunting buddy, our fishing buddy, our, she slept right on the floor next to my bed kind of buddy and uh you guys know earl's taken up the slack from bella since then but even before we lost bella houston's been asking for his own dog yes because houston's the only person in the family really that hasn't had his own dog yeah and he's the guy that's the outdoor kid the outdoor adventure kid that wants to go do everything and uh, he's been wanting a dog i was kind of thinking we might go back with another lab but this guy had other plants yes. and he picked out a breed. He's been researching it for months and I'm a little bit scared. DJ's a little bit scared, but we're going to pick up a puppy today and it's the one he picked out. He's paying for it with his own money. He's been saving up money, Christmas money, birthday money, you know, working, doing chores, helping out all the things, all the money. He's buying his own puppy. It's going to be our family dog. <laughs> <laughs> and it's dog. it's going to be an adventure for the is. next several years. So we're yeah. fixing to hit the road. We got about a two hour drive to go pick up this puppy, and uh, we'll pick you up and figure out if this is a good idea or not. This is a good idea. <laughs> Um, so that was crazy. That's a lot of puppies. Hang on, I can't see your face. Here. And, uh, that is, uh, definitely not a chocolate lab, Houston. I know. Kind of has the same color on her face. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a, uh, it's a chihuahua, right? That no. what you got? Oh my God. It's a... I just can't control it right now. Here, here, here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long-legged spotted chihuahua. No. Oh. It's much oh, smaller than I expected it to here. be. Earl, come meet your sister. Oh. <laughs> He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. That wasn't there a minute ago. <laughs> You'd be nice. Earl's never been the big brother. <laughs> He's been a kitty cat uncle. <laughs> <laughs> he did think he was a cat yeah. mom. What is it, Earl? What is that? Hmm? How come mom stole the puppy from Houston? Yeah. Because he said she's crawling all over me. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, uh, Earl, move, please. <laughs> here, come here. Earl, come over here. Or both. Oh! oh. <laughs> All right, buddy. How come I'm driving? I thought mom was driving. No. Houston, what'd you get, man? I got a German short-haired pointer. A German short-haired yeah, pointer. Her. Here, bud. It's a, a tiny little one, though. I thought they were bigger dogs than that. Well, she did. I asked her if she was the smallest because I was hoping to to have the smallest one and not like a... Hopefully, she won't be like a 90-pounder. You don't want a giant? No. No. So, she is the runt, technically. Hey. <laughs> what are you going to do with a German short hair pointer? Because we don't have quail to hunt. And I'm going, they're like a bird dog. I'm going to train it to deer hunt, shed hunt, and maybe a couple other things too. You're going to chase deer with a dog? If it runs you off. You just said you were going to train it to deer hunt. So you have to be a little <laughs> yeah. bit more descriptive because we don't hunt deer with dogs, by the way. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's not something we do in Oklahoma. Track when necessary. Houston, Houston's yeah. talking about. Well, we have a tracking dog. Gemma does not count. Gemma's our tracker, man. Well, maybe she can teach her. Well, Gemma's um, <laughs> not a young lady anymore, no. and she's a micro oh mini God. tracking dog. <laughs> so, uh, Irish 
he, I mean, the Earl is Irish Setter Poodle Mix, mm -hmm. not a bird dog. <laughs> but this really is a bird dog that's going to be a, hopefully, here, Houston's companion Aww. and <laughs> a deer tracking dog, hopefully, and a shed hunting dog. So when the <laughs> when the deer shed their antlers, uh, a lot of folks train lab, labs and a few other, you know, different breeds to to uh, go out and find sheds and that's something oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what happened that's something that houston's wanting to uh teach this dog to do yes Ten pounds. <coughs> <coughs> Earl, move. <coughs> Don't scare. Don't scare. He's sitting down there by the fire, staying warm. Everybody here staying warm. Would you sit down? <laughs> you just disappeared behind a blanket. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Houston's playing a video game. Me and Jimmy got to babysit. <laughs> Cranky butt left. <laughs> You're not gonna be able to sit like that for very long. You're gonna get too big really fast. Did you know that? Look, she has a face like Bella. What do you think? She kind of looked like Bella? Houston said that was one of the reasons he wanted to. Why he picked her in the GSP is that chocolate face. <laughs> Jimma left me. <laughs> Just pick her up. She wants up there with you and Izzy. It's like we really needed another animal in our house, didn't we? Hmm. Doesn't take up much space. She will. She doesn't take up much space right now. <laughs> this little thing's gonna be like a T-Rex, a dinosaur bouncing off the walls. <sighs> really soon. No, Gemma is not, Emily. Gemma is lazy. There's nothing wrong with that. She kind of like you and Izzy over there. No. Izzy's watching TV. <laughs> That's what you play. Jimmy, you don't have to look so unfriendly. <laughs> Izzy, what do you think about the new puppy? That's peeing. Oh, man. Just peed on the chair. <laughs> You want back up here? Houston's doing a great job. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. uh, welcome back to a windy, soggy Oklahoma day. It uh, rained about an inch and a half starting late last night through, well, most of the morning, about half the day today. And uh, it is a muddy mess around here. But farm chores have to be done things have to go on and uh we're gonna do them anyways so we are uh on the on the break of winter on the cusp we're fixing to fall off into the abyss in the next four or five days temperatures are gonna start dropping 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 and they're talking about single digit temperatures a couple nights in a row and probably not going to get above freezing for a few days not a fan of that kind of cold but <laughs> it is what it is uh so today i'm gonna be uh i'm gonna take the truck to town and get some alfalfa square bales alfalfa is really good hay to feed the animals when it gets super cold that rumen um is it's a uh, 
what keeps those animals warm. And the more they can eat, the more protein, the better quality food they get, the more their body's going to produce heat. So I'm going to go buy, I don't know, probably a dozen square bales of alfalfa and a bunch of bedding and things and start getting things ready for the freezing cold abyss. Oh, but in other news, the other day I, I did a little short video about our turkeys because Larry and Linda had decided to become wintertime parents. And Larry is our big white Tom. You guys have seen him forever. Uh, he decided to start going broody and sitting on a nest full of eggs. Well, Larry, I don't understand it. But Larry has abandoned his job and is back to doing Larry things. He has not been sitting on this nest for two days. So obviously those eggs aren't gonna do anything. But Larry thought he was a Linda for a couple days. But speaking of Linda, our little peach colored hen, she's setting on two eggs. It was three for a couple weeks and she's down to two eggs. And I took those in the shop yesterday and candled them. And if you're not familiar with candling eggs, what that means is, uh, just, just chill, Linda. I'm not gonna take your eggs. Uh oh, uh oh, look. When you, okay, so when you candle eggs, you uh, put a light underneath them in a dark room and you can see through the egg to see if there's, you know, a chick developing. She's angry right now, but she has good reason. She's being protective because Linda, ouch! Linda is becoming a mom. Look, can you hear it? It's moving. They're both fertile, and I guess today's hatch. Ah, oh, Linda! Don't kill your baby. All right, listen, you, I'll, I'll leave you alone. You do your thing. Can you believe that? That turkey is hatching out two babies. They're both fertile, and you both, yesterday I could hear them both chirping in the egg. Today, one's pipping and is trying to get out of the egg, and, well, it's my fault. I reached under there and grabbed the egg, but Linda cracked it a little more, so maybe she'll help, <laughs> help the, uh, hatching process so we'll check back later today we should have a baby a baby turkey on january the 8th i'm not sure what she's thinking in other news though before we uh go to town i gotta run down to the creek talk about something <laughs> so no trapping video today we are not trapping you're not going to see any animals trapped at all today but we may have an issue with it being winter time uh, predators are on the prowl looking for food. That's that's no secret. And with this extreme cold coming, uh, I, I feel like the coyotes, bobcats, the bigger predators are going to be uh, more and more brave. And we're, we're about, uh, about 30 days out probably from goat kidding season, which they're close to the barn. They've got bear there for protection. But you always have to be on alert when it comes to predators especially during kidding season. Because a baby goat weighs, you know, six, seven pounds and is very uh, susceptible to a predator. Let's just say that. So you guys know we've been doing a lot of uh, predator trapping trying to remove some, some fur bears for various reasons, different reasons. But uh, when it comes to the coyotes, they are a predator. Now, they are a, a dangerous predator that can cause problems on a farm. And I think everyone knows that. Um, we've all, all seen those cartoons, right? So why am I at the creek and the dam more specifically? It's because I have a game camera right there. And this is a spot where I've been watching the beavers and the otters cross so they come up the creek, crawl up these rocks, and move on upstream. It's just a very good spot to be able to see the otters and the beavers. And I've had that camera there for, you know, several weeks. Well, last night, as usual, the beavers are crossing. I haven't seen the otters in a few weeks. I kind of think they might have cleaned out the creek in this area, and they've moved on to better hunting grounds for now. But anyways, the beavers are coming and going just like they do multiple times every night. And then a coyote was right here. So 
So as you can see, that coyote was standing right there on the dam. He was also down here in the rocks hunting and everything, which we are in a, out in the woods. We live where the coyotes live. The problem in lies right where that coyote was on camera last night is less than about 50 yards from my back fence where the donkeys and the alpacas are. And uh, that's close to the house. I'll show you. It's kind of hard to see through the timber, but I'm going to get up here on a little bit of high ground and show you. We're, I would say that trail camera next to the dam right here is less than 200 yards from my house. Okay, there's the dam swimming hole, the dam and the swimming hole. Not what you think I said. <laughs> Anyways, creek, our driveway runs up this way. Our house is right there barn greenhouse there's a tractor and this entire back area this whole hillside is where the donkeys and the alpacas roam throughout the day and night obviously they can go back in and go up to their little shelter up there but i don't know if you guys can see it the fence runs right through there to enclose that pasture now we have not only the donkeys, I'm not too worried about a coyote getting after the donkeys, or most of the alpacas except maybe Reba. But we do have all the chickens, all the ducks, the turkeys, the goats, and one livestock guardian. One dog named Bear, who does a great job. Um, in the past, we've actually had a coyote in our driveway, in our yard at night. I, matter of fact, I got it on video. I'll show that if I can find that old clip. Keaton Bear! It's a good coat. Bear, I watched him under our nightlight run and attack a coyote and they both ran off into the woods. The thing about coyotes is they work in groups, especially more, well, probably more commonly in pairs, but they will group up and attack your animals. Okay. So we are trapping to help out the turkey population, all the nests, um, all the ne ground nesting birds, you know, things like that. But this is 100% a backyard security issue. I mean, the coyote is crossing right here. So if he was at the dam, that means he was probably all up in through here. Nothing happened. Nothing got attacked last night, which is great. Bear did his job, more than likely. And uh, that's, that's his job. That's what he does. That's why I get when I get questions from people of why is Bear left outside? Why is Bear left at the barn? Why does Bear not ever get to come in the house? It's because he is our livestock guardian dog. Does a fantastic job. But these coyotes are creeping awful close to home. And where there's one, there's two, maybe three, four, five. And that's why we're trapping coyotes. We're trying to stay proactive and stay ahead of the predators before they attack. Because if we wait until they start attacking livestock, it's too late. They're going to wipe out animals. And if, let's say, bear does, have, let's say a coyote comes up in the yard, bear chases it off. Well, there may be three or four more lurking, waiting to attack. So, you know, I, I know a lot of people are not interested in trapping videos, trapping content. I 100% understand, and if you choose not to watch those videos, that's that's your personal opinion. But to uh, to come at us and attack us and tell us we're horrible human beings for for trapping for trapping predators, uh, you're just wrong, and that's just the way I believe. And you're not going to convince me otherwise. But uh, we're going to stay on top of you know the problem before it becomes a real problem. And uh, like I said, 95% of our audience is great. They understand, and that's that's good. And I'm not trying to, to poke the bear or anything like that. But I don't I don't want to be a content creator that isn't truthful and honest and doesn't show what really goes on. Um, it's not just about going out and trapping an animal just to kill it and say, hey, I killed it. There's a reason. There's a purpose for a lot of this stuff. Well, pretty much everything. That we and uh, I think it's important to show that some people can't handle that and it's just 
it is what it is. We are uh, much more than, than an online petting zoo. Uh, we do love our animals. We love all of our donkeys and alpacas and the goats and, you know, Larry and Linda and Charlie. And they're great animals. But I don't want anybody to get confused and just think we're nothing but an online petting zoo and everything's happy-go-lucky all the time and there's no issues, there's no things that need to be taken care of. Predators are just something that we are taking care of. All right, now that we got that part out of the way, let's head to the feed store, get some alfalfa, some chicken feed, and, uh, you know, all the things. Are you going? Are you going? Daddy daycare here, taking care of everybody. You better wake up. Houston's coming. Wake up. Are you a sleepy head? <laughs> Don't be jealous, Earl. I promise, you're still my favorite. Is that Patrick Mahomes? You better watch out, you're gonna lose your spot. I told you to move, Earl, you didn't listen. Be coming in here with no D's and F's on a report card. No, it's straight. It's straight. A's. Straight A's. What? I didn't even know you had your report card. That's a lucky guess. Huh. Let's see. Look at that. Can't beat a report card like that. Ooh, that one's a 90. Mm, you're going to have to be careful in reading. Hey, that was a couple weeks ago. All right. Uh, I brought your dog. Thank All you. she wants to do is sleep. <laughs> Hmm. All y'all want to do is sleep. Well, I don't think we actually told anyone what her name was yesterday. Well, Maybe we did. Mom was videoing, I think. Oh. And we said it. No, oh, did she? Okay. Well, her name is what? Kelsey K. Arms. Kelsey. Huh. Well, it says on there. That says Patrick. Mahomes. That one's Patrick. My, so, my other one's at home. So Houston's a uh, Travis Kelsey fan, and Mom is a Jason Kelsey fan. Yeah. So, it's Kelsey, K-E-L-C-I-E, -E, Kelsey. Did you That's say cool. I? K-E-L-C-I-E, isn't it? Mm, no, I think it's... K-E-L-C-E? -E? I don't know how they spell their name. Yeah, it's K-E-L-C-E. -E. Okay, well, either way, -E her name is Kelsey. Kelsey Kate. Where'd the Kate come from? I don't know, Mom just did it. It's just a Mom thing, huh? Yeah. Well, Kelsey... Let's go home so you can take a nap. Gray got up a little bit. What are you delinquents doing? Hmm? What do you want? Well, there's 12 uh, three-string alfalfa bales. These things are not like a normal square bale. <laughs> it takes everything I've got to move them around. I think they're, I want to say probably 100 to 120 pounds a piece. And I think those come out of Kansas, but I'm not sure. Um, 
we're going to use those sparingly. We will supplement or feed. Well, we're going to feed and supplement with some alfalfa. All animals have uh, round bales of hay that we, you know, bailed up here off of our property. But uh, those things are like $37 a piece. So they are very expensive. But these guys or girls, these ladies are worth it. Phoebe, <laughs> y'all are uh, covered in hay already. <laughs> Have y'all been nibbling on a round bell today? Hmm? Now that it finally quit raining? Bree's got hay all over her. Hey, Bree, you want to sniff my finger? Hmm? Smell my hand? Don't bite my fingers like the others do. All right. Reba. Oh, my goodness. Reba. You're like a, you're like a hay snowman. Look at you. You're a mess. Are you needing more insulation? Huh? <laughs> you are a mess. Look at you. <laughs> are you, are you camouflaged? Are you trying to hide? What's going on here? Huh? Did you do that to her, Phoebe? Huh? Did you throw hay all over Reba? <laughs> You guys are a mess. It's a sloppy mess out here, but it is what it is. So they've got their round bale of hay over here. That'll uh, give them something to munch on throughout the day. And then, like I said, we do we do feed once a day and uh, we'll supplement them with some, some good alfalfa hay through this cold spell. Make sure they have good dry bedding and uh, they'll be just fine. What I need to do is take that round bale out of the hay feeder and move it into here. Typically, I'll put the hay bale in the middle of this little barn in the wintertime, and then I can pull the hay off all over. It makes good bedding up in there. Let go of my finger. Ow! It makes for good dry bedding up there, and uh, they can eat it under the cover of a roof, kind of like the hay bale where the goats are right now. And speaking of the goats, hay bale up here, it's just sitting on the ground, and... Uh, They've just about got it to where it's going to want to fall over soon. But, like I said, it will uh, it will make some good bedding. Look at that. They have eaten all the way around that thing. Typically, I don't like to uh, feed the goats round bells sitting on the ground. But when it's up under the barn like this, it's not a big deal. Eventually, it's going to fall, and then they're going to climb all over it, and it'll be wasted. I mean, it just is what it is. That's one of the perks of... of uh, growing our own hay and baling our own hay anyways it's uh you know we're not paying as much that's probably if you were buying hay you know you're looking at a 50 60 dollar round bale but anyways when it does fall we'll spread it out and these uh, these goats and pepper and bear here will have some really good deep bedding for uh the cold spell huh pepper what you been doing today? Bear, get out of the way. I'm talking to Pepper. What have you been doing today, Pepper? Oh, yeah? That, that much? That good, huh? All right. Well, Earl, would you look at that? Somebody left our breakfast laying on the ground. Better pick those up. That one needs to be cleaned off. Look at there. Free range breakfast. All right, y'all. Animals are fed. Everybody's taken care of. The cold's not here yet, but uh, it will be in just a few days. But you guys didn't think I forgot about Linda, did you? We got to check on Linda and see if that baby ever hatched. All right, Linda. Calm down. Earl. Get back. Get back. You're the problem. Did you have a baby today, Linda? I'm going to say yes, judging by your attitude. Can I look under? Can I take a peek? Oh, I heard a peek. She's going to wear my hand out if I reach in there. Listen, guys, I'm doing it for you, okay? I'm doing it for you because I hear a baby. I hear you. Oh, there it is. Ouch! Ouch! Linda, that hurt. All right. Turkeys peck much harder than chickens, if you guys didn't know. Ouch! Just, 
I just want to see. Ow! 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 It's not worth it, guys. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I see one. I see one. One baby. All right, I'll leave you alone. <laughs> Earl, you leave her alone too. Okay? All right, we'll leave you. Well, Linda did it. She successfully hatched out a baby turkey in January. And I don't know what we're gonna do with her, but we're gonna have to figure something out because she can't stay right there. Hopefully this other chick hatches tonight and uh, we can move her into one of the stalls or something and put a heat lamp in there because there's no way those babies are gonna make it without a little bit of help. And I know this video is probably running really, really long, but it's just a lot going on. A lot I wanted to share with you guys. Houston got his new puppy, Kelsey, the German short-haired pointer. She's a tiny little thing. She's like seven weeks old. Um, but I think he's going to have a great companion for many years to come. I'm a little scared. DJ and I are a little scared about the German short-haired pointer breed because they're just such an active, high-energy dog. And obviously, it's a bird dog. But Earl's half-bird dog, and he doesn't mess with the birds. At least not too much. And uh, there's probably a huge difference in Earl's half-breed Irish setter and that German short-haired pointer. But uh, I think Houston and I are probably going to try to do some actual formal obedience training with this dog. German shared pointers as a breed need structure and uh, they need a good solid leader or uh, they will become the leader. But aside from that, uh, one thing, I went back and I looked at all of the video clips of that coyote. So when I was talking about that coyote at the dam earlier, I knew that uh, I was just going off of pictures. I hadn't actually reviewed all of the videos that my trail camera had had taken throughout the night just scrolling through pictures and saw beaver there a couple times coyote there but it is 100 percent clearly obvious that that coyote was hunting a beaver that coyote was hunting a beaver that's crazy like i've never heard of such a thing i don't think a coyote could kill a beaver they're they're a just a big strong tough animal but uh he's hungry if that coyote is hunting a 40, 50 pound beaver, he's hungry. And he's not just looking to play. And you could see he was, and you could see his eyes in the background of that one video, it was kind of creepy. But uh, that's why we're trapping. We're trapping to protect our animals from potential problems. So anyways, guys, that's all I've got for today. Earl and I are about wore out. We're gonna go in, rest up, have some supper. So anyways, guys, remember, very important. Do something today to make somebody smile because you never know, it just might change the world. Just like old cameraman Ron did for the rest of us. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. No coyotes were trapped today, but we're still on them. So we'll see you guys on the next video. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.